Not all Grand Tour stages are created equal. Some are little more than a gentle spin down some pristine roads, and others are monsters. And this is a monster. Stage 16 of the Giro starts here on the shores of Lake Iseo, and it's 226 kilometers long, with over 6,000 meters of elevation, including the utterly bonkers climbs of the Gavia and the Mortarolo, back to back. I mean, it sounds absolutely brutal, James, but how hard do you reckon it is? Well, I guess we're gonna have to ride it, mate. Come on. I guess we are. Come on. In the absence of our team bus and hordes of adoring fans that are normally greeting us at the start of a big ride, we're taking the opportunity to have a nice chilled out pre-ride espresso. And interestingly, for the start of this stage, the organizers have pushed the start back to 10.30 a.m., so it's earlier than normal because it's expected that the winner will take seven hours. And you can expect that the Grappetto and Sprinters could take 40 minutes to an hour longer than that. It's gonna be a massive day out. Saying that, Ollie, it's 10.30 already. What? What's well, 10.30? We need to get cracking. It's gonna be a long day, this, isn't it? Well, that's if we can even do it. The route of the stage leaves Lavere and climbs up to the first summit of the day, the Paso della Presolana. Then just 17 kilometers later, topping out at another climb, the Croce di Salven. In the shadow of what's to come, they look pretty modest, but at 1,300 meters, I suspect they will be tough tests in their own right. After that, the fun really begins as the road pitches upwards for 70 kilometers to what will be the highest point of this year's race, the Cima Coppi, the Gavia, which tops out at 2,618 meters. Then there's the actual fun part, 50 kilometers of descending before the Mortirolo. Short at only 12 kilometers, but the average gradient is brutal. There's even a solid six kilometers in the middle where the gradient averages over 12%. After that, it's just a casual 15 kilometers of gentle uphill to the finish. This first section of the stage as it goes through the town is actually the neutralized zone. And uh, that's well for safety and the fact that there'll be loads of crowds here. But it means that we have to ride an extra, well, a couple of kilometers that don't even count. Huh. Hold on, mate, we are coming up to the start. Yeah? You ready? Kilometer what? zero. Let's do it. Oh. Now, I would say, the difference between us and the pros is that we don't have a peloton to jaw off the ice. So, we're gonna be pushing the wind all day. You right there, Ollie? Well, we've only just started. There's already climbing out the gate. <laughs> things about the Giro and being a pro in general is that you don't get to pick the weather. It is what it is. In some ways, this is one of the things that's nice about not being a pro in that if you were to come and have a go at this, you could just pick a sunny day. And if it was like today, where it's looking like it's going to tip it down when it's starting to, then you could just say, no, nah, we'll do it tomorrow. But, <laughs> well, Oh, mate. <laughs> it's also worth mentioning, this is where the domestiques will go back, get the capes from the team car, and bring them back up to the leaders, so then the leaders can hold position and they don't expend energy. 
generally... Do you want a cake, mate? <laughs> no, I'm all right, dude. I'm all right at the minute. But generally speaking, the professionals are going to be praying that when the Giro comes through here, it doesn't rain. Because on a killer stage like this, it just makes it exponentially harder if the weather's terrible. Even though this is a three-week race, and this killer stage comes two-thirds of the way through that race, it's not going to be about conserving energy or taking it easy for most of the riders. Some of the guys will be flogging themselves and going really hard, attacking out of the block just to try and make the day's breakaway for a chance of glory. Other riders will be counter-attacking that breakaway. And this attacking and counter-attacking could happen probably up until the top of the second climb. For other riders, they'll just be going as hard as they can just to stay in the bunch. Sprinters, well, they can't afford to get dropped by the peloton because doing so will most likely mean they miss the time cut and get eliminated from the race. On days like today, all the peloton is thinking about is trying to stay warm and get into the finish. No chat, no jokes, just silence. A bit like us, really. Just five hours to go, mate. Just gone over the top of the first climb. But even for the guys at the back, there'll be no respite. If the race is full gas on the front, there could easily be split because there's heavy braking and big accelerating, especially in conditions like this. third of the way. <laughs> Don't know about you mate, but after coming down that wet descent, I am glad I've got this brakes. What a view. The scenery on this stage is absolutely breathtaking and we're about 45 kilometres into the stage on the second categorised climb, the Croce di Salvern. And it's about 1,107 metres high, I believe. And when we get to the top of this, we just descend into Edolo, where we begin the long drag up the valley road towards the fearsome Gavia. But, uh, well, Hank's got to fix his puncture first before we can crack on. Wet or dry, the pros will be smashing these descents and the speeds they go up to is pretty incredible really. Right, do you want the good news or the bad news? Good news, mate. Well, the good news is we're over the second climb. The bad news is the profile shows a 54 kilometer drag all the way up to the Garvia. It's misleading, the profile, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. Do you know what? 65K is a big day out for me still. Right, like, quick maths, right? That means we've still got 160K to go. 160K? We've been riding for like, what? 
best part of three hours. <laughs> That's not too good. The sign says the Mortarolo is closed, which means the snow hasn't melted, but the Giro comes through here in a week. <laughs> I hope I they clear the snow. Yeah, I hope they clear it by then. But it means we might not be able to get over it today as well, unfortunately. Uh, I guess we'll go as far as we can. Gutted. I mean, if we can't climb it, gutted. <laughs> Let's come back where it's a bit sunnier. Just gone past the sign for Ponte di Legno, which is nestled down there at the foot of the Gavia. And that's because once the riders go over the top of the Gavia, they loop back round over the Mortirolo, back up the valley and finish here. So a little bit depressing going past the finish, knowing you've still got like a hundred kilometers to go. <laughs> The pros might be trying to make the time cut, but to be honest, I'm just trying to complete it before it gets dark. So we've just been through the sign up La Gavia. This is a 16 kilometer climb, averaging 8% and maxing out at 16%. This is an utter beast of a climb. It is, but it tops out at about 2,700 meters and the sign back there said it's currently shut. Yeah. Which doesn't bode well for us because the Mortirolo sign also said that was shut which means if they are, we might not be able to complete our route today, but we'll try and get up as far as we can and see what we can do. But uh, yeah, it is a savage climb this, absolutely killer. The Gavia has been a decisive feature of the Giro on several occasions. Some of you may remember Andy Hampstead taking the Maglia Rosa up this climb in atrocious weather conditions. And more recently, in 2014, the race came over here and Nairo Quintana took the Maglia Rosa that day and it was also atrocious conditions. So the fact that we can't go all the way at the top, well, that's just typical of this climb, really. It's deceptively steep up here. There are a few sections later on, I know because I've ridden it before, that are kind of falls flat at sort of two, three percent. And so that average gradient is very misleading. This bit on here, on my Wahoo, I mean, this is 10, sometimes ramping up to 12. And when you get into double digits, it's just hard, especially after a hundred odd K. I'm feeling it, man. This is a killer stage. And the other thing that makes the Garvia especially difficult it's how high it is because the altitude, you just can't get the power out unless you're Nairo Quintana. Of which we're not. <laughs> This isn't a good sign. No. 
I guess this is the end of our road. Yeah. Well, the sign back there saying that the Garvey was shut wasn't lying. No, definitely not. <laughs> and I guess this means, well, if the Garvey is shut and the Mortarolo is shut, unfortunately, we can't complete the, the recon and we can't ride the full stage. No, how long have we done? We've done, well, according to the Wahoo, 130 kilometres and 2,700 metres of climbing. So just over halfway. And it's been absolutely brutal, hasn't it? So yeah. I don't think we would have finished it. Well, I think we probably would have finished it in the dark. There's no <laughs> yeah. doubt in my mind that this stage is savage. Yeah. It is a ridiculously hard stage and it'll be an amazing spectacle to watch on TV. <sighs> I'm quite relieved we'd have to do it today. Yeah, it's been really tough. And if you've enjoyed seeing us suffer, then make sure you give this video a big thumbs up. And for more Jira content, why don't you click on Ollie? I, I think we should go for pizza now. I want, I want to get warm. <laughs> get pizza. This has been a long day, hasn't it? Oh, God. <laughs>